So what we have here today is a Wells Gardner U2000. And this is the chassis, not the tube, I'll get to that in a minute. This is the chassis that was in our Terminator 2 machine at the arcade. And it was working fine forever, and then all of a sudden one day it had no colors. It was, it was dim and dark and no colors, black and white. Now I've already got a video on how to fix these, the U2000, 5000, 7400, 7500, when you have a black and white image, and it's almost always R811. Uh, this guy right here, R811. Now it's supposed to be between 50 and 100K ohm. On the U2000, it's on the higher side, closer to 100, and that's what this one reads, 100.3 in-circuit and out-of-circuit, so it's not R811. So if you have one of these ver series of chassis with a black and white image, uh, in contrast, does nothing, absolutely nothing on contrast. So if you have one of these where you have no contrast, it's black and white, and it's dim, and R811 is good, it reads between 50 and 100 K ohm, uh, most likely the other culprit is going to be this chip, this RGB chip on the neck board. Uh, why? Oh, there we go. Um, that little chip right there, that LM1203 November, most of the time, that's going to be the cause of no color. Now, if you have, you know, missing, if you're missing one color or the other, uh, you know, that's always obviously going to be the notorious problems with the transistors or the traces or the resistors in between the, the uh, heat sinks that heat up and break and open up or these resistors here or these transistors over here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, these, tra these three transistors here. The little NPN, PNP transistors, those are for red, green, blue. Those can go open. Uh, there's any, you know, you can have bad header pin solder. You could have a bad wire. You could have a bad board, uh, main PCB. That could, missing one or two colors could be any number of a dozen different issues. But if you have no colors and contrast does nothing, um, then it's either going to be the R811 or it's going to be that chip. So I just happen to have a spare chip here that I had in my tub of spare parts. So what we'll do is I will remove that chip and we'll put this one in and we'll see if it fixes it. So uh, just for show and tell here, let me turn this on. Uh, make sure we're all connected. We got power, um, anode, neck, yoke is hooked up, ground, we got video, okay. So let me show you what it's doing here. All right, came on. And let's wait for image. If we get one, any day now. Okay, so there's our brightness, and as you can see, I have to turn it way over driven. Right about there is where it should be, but I have to turn it up just to get the image, and you can see that, uh, yep, there's no colors. It's just black and white. If I turn my contrast pot, there's all the way down, there's all the way up. So if I turn the contrast pot, all the way down, all the way up, all the way down, it does absolutely nothing. And you can see it's just basically black and white. Um, I'm sorry for the glare, I got my little window open on over here, so... Uh, yeah, it's black and white. You know what, let me do something here real quick. There we go, that's better. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, there you go. So it's, it looks overly red, but it's, it's because I have the brightness turned up. I turn it down to where it should be, right about there. Yeah, you can't even see it. I mean, that's how dark it was inside the machine. So we've got a problem with no color. And again, it's not the R811, it checks good in circuit and nano circuit. So I'm gonna change this uh, chip out and we'll see what happens. So stand by, I'll get the camera on the overhead. I'll do a, a time lapse of changing it out. Time lapse of changing it out, easy for me to say. And then we'll hook it all back up and see if that did anything. So stand by one moment. Sorry, real quick, I forgot to mention that uh, I had talked about not, not being the original tube. This is a Hanorex Polo tube, and I had to kind of retrofit it to be able to test this because this is the only spare tube I have at the moment uh, that I can use to support this. Um, so yeah, I had to do some you know, jury rigging here of the... Uh, yoke connections and it's sitting on a piece of plexiglass and all that so that's why it looks so odd uh, but anyway so yeah let's get this uh, chip changed out and we'll see what happens well sorry for the delay again but I wanted to show real quick here just in case you're not familiar with where R811 is and what it's supposed to read and all that I mean I'm, I know I just mentioned it but just for show and tell and to help people out 
without having to go and reference a whole other video since we're already here right now watching this one. Um, again, R811 is this guy right here. Um, it's usually, it's right here in this area. Now, on the U2000, 5000, 74, 7500, they're, they're in different locations, but they're always right here. It's either going to be here or here or down here. It's always going to be right here. You can see it says R811. So it's this guy right there. Now, on the U2000s, it reads on the higher side. They're supposed to be between 50 and 100 K ohm. On the 7400, it's on the lower side, 75, and, and U5000, it's kind of on the, in the middle, around 75K. But on the U2000s, it's on the higher side, around uh, right on the 100K mark. I've actually got three of these U2000s, and they all read around 100K. So let me show you here, when we read R811, if we go to one tab, or one side of the resistor and the other. Uh, don't make a liar out of me here. These are oxidized slightly. Let's just check the back side. The back side should be these two pads right here. There we go. See, it's 50. It'll climb up to it, end up being around 100. There you go, 100 K ohm. So yeah, R811 is good. That is not the problem of the black and white image. Usually it is. I'd say probably eight out of ten times if you got a black and white image, no no contrast control, uh, no colors, no anything. Uh, it's most of the time it's that R it's R811. But in this case, as you can see, or as you saw there, it reads good. Let me get it off of the. Let me put it this here. I'm working on a pinball machine, so this is one of the wheels out of the pinball machine. Um, let's just set it, take it off of the bench here and test it without it touching the metal bench. That shouldn't make a issue or shouldn't make a difference, I guess. But we'll test it again here. Hmm. There's some. It doesn't like being tested this way for some reason. There we go. There we go. So yep, there you go, 100k ohm, right on the top of the of the edge of what it's supposed to be. But like I say, the uh, U2000, I've got a whole another U2000 over here. Um, I've got a whole another one here. And if we test R811 on this one, let's just sneak in here. This one going to give me the same grief. There, see, this one's 102 k ohm. So yeah, on the U2000, it's a, it's on the higher end of the reading. But obviously, R811 is not the problem in this case. So let's get this chip changed out. Uh, let's see. Here's the new one. Put this back over here. I'll set this back aside. Oh, I forgot to uh, mention that uh, I know for a fact it's bad because I did some testing here before I just made this clip right, this part right here about the R811. If you look here, um, this this ground plane that goes to this leg right here. Let's put our meter lead on that one. You can see this ground plane here that runs to this leg. And if we go, the, when you're checking for shorted chips like this, it's just go to a ground, go to your ground plane. And for instance, I could go to, oh, hmm, right here. This resistor here is part of the ground plane. So now if we go to pin 3, 64 ohms. That's an, a, a, this should be something totally different. 64.2 ohms is just a, a random odd reading. It shouldn't be 64 ohms. Again, if we go to the ground plane pin, which goes to here and do the same thing, this pin 3, 64 ohms. 
So that is not a good reading. You don't want anything reading to ground like that that's not completely shorted to ground and not in the mega ohms. That's a that is not a good reading. And as a matter of fact, um, do I have I got that other neck board over here. Let's see what that reads. If we check this one. Do this here. Will you let me do this? Please. There we go. Okay, so if we go to that same ground plane pin, which is this one, and we touch pin three. Yeah, look at that. 3K. 3, 3K ohm. So, yep, now I am 100% certain that my black and white image is caused by this RGB chip. Not, not uh, uncommon, but also not too common. Like I say, it's almost always the R811. But in this case, it's the RGB chip. So I just wanted to make this video to kind of chronicle that and show you because it is something that does happen. And I can make a whole hour-long video on the other causes of why you're missing a single color. <laughs> like I say, it could be any number of a dozen to more issues. Uh, so those are harder to, tr to troubleshoot, but usually that's a problem with in this area of no colors. Very, very rarely it'll be one of these three. I've had uh, missing blue and missing green and missing red and it ends up being one of these three transistors right here that causes it. I've had it be caused by a broken neck pot. I've had it be caused by these resistors inside between the heat sinks. I've had it be caused by you know, these resistors and bad transistors and bad traces. Um, so anyway, yeah, let's get this changed out. I, I've said it about a dozen times now, but now we're ready. So let's get the camera here uh, ready to go and. I'll switch to the uh, time lapse and we'll see how it turns out. Okay, chip is successfully changed out. No, no uh, bridge joints. Everything looks good, nice and shiny. Good, good uh, joints. So, let's test our pins again here. Let's go to our ground plane, which was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and pin three. Hey, sixty. 4 ohms is gone. Now we're in the 6K. It doesn't read quite the same as the other neck board, but this one has the other the mod done to it. Um, or hasn't had the mod done to it. It's, it's different. Some of these are different revisions. You know, P719i, there's a J, there's an H. There's different revisions that have different mods. So it may not, may not all read the same, but the most important thing here is it's no longer reading 64 ohms here. 6K. So yeah, definite improvement. I'm confident that'll be it. So let's get it on the tube and cross our fingers and see what happens now. 
Now again here, sorry, I forgot to mention that when I actually soldered it in, the, I soldered those two pads first, the ground plane pin and pin three, and tested it just to make sure it was good, and it, it, yeah, I was reading the same uh, with just those two pins. So before I went through and soldered the entire thing in there, I wanted to make sure that it was no, no longer reading 64 ohms. So that's what you saw me do there. So yeah, now let's get it on the tube, see what happens. Okay, all hooked back up. Ready to go. Let's turn it on. Let's see if we have our colors. I have not tested it. I want to share in the knowledge with you guys. So let's see what happens. Uh, one, two, three. Yeah, came on. That's a good sign. What do we have? Well, hallelujah. Whoa, contrast down. Turn our brightness back down to roughly there. Now again, this chassis was on a different tube, so I'm not going to mess with size, adjustments, colors, none of that. But there you go, man. All right. We got our colors back. Um, we can do this the easy way by going to here. Diagnostic tests. Monitor patterns. Red, green, blue. Hot diggity and shazam. Well, there you go. If you got a U2000, 5000, 74, 7500, no colors, uh, no contrast adjustment, it's not our uh, 811, you most likely have a bad RGB chip on your neck board. So, fantastic. Just wanted to pass that along. Um, so if you come across that in the future, hopefully this helps you out. I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you on the next repair.